And we are back here with Glenn Velez, and Glenn is actually uh, holding my Valron, which I got. This is the Cooperman. Yeah, this is made by the Cooperman Drug Company uh, from uh, near Brattleboro, Vermont. Okay. And uh, it's one I designed, and it has uh, tunable capability, so you can tune the head in case you wanted to get a different pitch, low or high, from the, the head by using these tension uh, rods under here. You can tune it high or low. Mm -hmm. It has a uh, crossbar in the back. This crossbar can come out so that in case you're traveling you can put other drums inside of here. And uh, just generally it was designed to try to get a lot of uh, resonance out of the drum mm -hmm. and get a lot of variety in the, the uh, tones that you can get from the edge and from the center. Right, right. And I've used it quite a bit mm -hmm. in my routines. Okay. It's uh, worked out well. Um, and and what else? Uh, so you have Cooperman. Does Remo have a line of Yes, I have uh, frame drums that I designed for Remo, various ones. Uh, ones that are tunable and ones that are non-tunable. And mm -hmm. some tambourines, different types of tambourines also. Right, right. And, and you have a new shaker now. Yeah, I, I don't have one to show you, but I have a shaker that I designed for a company in um, Germany called Anklong. Okay. And these are uh, shakers that are octagonal. They have eight mm. sides. Okay. And uh, the playing style is derived from uh, two Morocco styles that I studied, uh, Venezuelan and Colombian. Both of those places have very beautiful ways of playing maracas. Right, right. And so I took those styles and the technique and uh, developed a, a, a kind of a new approach to left and right hand independence with using two shakers. Mm -hmm. So we developed these uh, shakers in Germany so that there would be two very different pitches so that when you played them simultaneously you get a very interesting polyrhythmic uh, uh, material that you can develop. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'll do a solo on those at the concert. Okay, so if you want to check out the Shakers, you got to be there on Saturday night. And um, and also one thing that's very uh, that always stands out, I think, for most people at the show is it's your your overtone singing. Uh -huh. Now, how did that get into the mix of frame drum? Um, well, actually, a friend of mine, Steve Gordon, wonderful mm -hmm. band, band sure. Surrey flute player, he, uh, we were doing a road trip in upstate New York doing some gigs uh -huh. with uh, his wife at the time, and um, he, we were on this long eight-hour drive, and so we were trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> he said, have you yeah. ever tried this? And so he showed me the basics of the overtones, and I hadn't heard it before mm -hmm. or, or tried it, and uh, from that time on, I just was really fascinated with it and just kept trying to develop it and finding out as much as I could. When this, when I was introduced to it back in the mid 80s, mm -hmm. uh, there was not a lot of information about it. There were no recordings right. available in the West at that time of overtone singing. Except for one guy, there was a guy, there is a guy named Michael Vetter who's a, a German overtone singer. Mm -hmm. And he had released in the late 70s, early 80s some recordings of his overtone singing with some very interesting uh, explanations about it. Mm -hmm. And that was my main source material okay. at the yeah. beginning. Nice. And then I just kept practicing it and then uh, that combined with the tonal qualities of the frame drum. Because mm -hmm. when you play repeated notes on the frame drum, you get a drone to the uh, sound. Right. So that pitch you can easily sing with, it's kind of inviting you mm -hmm. to sing and doing the long, slow, deep breathing of overtone singing just really blends well with the shamanic qualities of the frame room. Right, so has that blend, had you heard that blend before you, you did it, or did you discover that? No, I hadn't heard that combination, okay. mm -hmm. but uh, when I was doing a tour with Paul Winter in uh, Siberia, back in the late 80s, uh, there's a place called uh, the Buryat people in Siberia, and apparently they do both of those things. They do the overtone singing. Oh, wow. And they have a drum that's similar to this a shamanic style drum. And the, that one has some strings on the inside and they hold it. They play it with a stick. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then they sing with it. 
Was so when I uh, went over there, we, we were in a little village and, and we played for them saxophone and drum. Mm -hmm. And I played some uh, some of the drum and did some overtone singing. And uh, I was very surprised because the people there were very, um, they were very nice about it, but they weren't surprised at all. <laughs> and the reason that that was surprising to me was because here, when people hear that combination, they're very surprised about the sound of the overtones and mm -hmm. the drum together. Right. But there they were used to the sound, so yeah. nothing new to them. And you also don't think of that, that sound coming out of uh, someone from Dallas, <laughs> usually. <Right>. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, and so, so your time with Paul Winter, I mean, you, um, you, you were with him for what, about uh, 11 years? Or about so? 15 years. 15 yeah. years. And you, uh, through through that, uh, you have several Grammys. I yeah, and yeah. Well, Paul was, Witcher, we won. Uh, we had four Grammys. Wow. Over the course of that fifteen-year period. Yeah, that's that's great. And um, uh, yeah, do, do you want to give a little? Can you give a little demo for of the overtones? The overtones. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just a quick little, so, so people you, have an idea. Yes, yeah, so I'm just using the drum as a drone, just hitting it. How strong the pitch is. I mean, it's it's and and again, we can just real quick tell people if you, if you slow the space down between two syllables like er and e, mm -hmm. and you go really slow between those two, these harmonics, natural hom harmonics in the vocal cords, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. and, and it comes out. You just have to be careful where you're practicing because. <laughs> Uh, you know, people might might wonder what's going on in there. You know, exactly. um, that's why it's good to practice in your car. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, and and now, I mean, there's there's so many students out there who are taking up frame drumming, and and really, it's it's because of your work, and um, it seems to be quite a growing community out there. Is yeah, I'm just happy that people are interested in the drum, and that mm -hmm. they really are uh, appreciating it more and more and more people, percussionists and just people who want to experiment with drumming are finding that it is a really uh, wonderful sound tool. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So um, I think we're going to take another break here and then we'll come back and we'll have a little live performance and give you a taste of what you are going to see on Saturday. Okay. All right, sounds good. <laughs> 